everybody! Today I'm going to be doing a super highly requested video. I get asked this question so many times on Formspring, on Twitter, on Facebook, on YouTube. So I knew I wanted to make a whole video just about it, which is entitled, Why do you want to be a mortician? Having my dream being a mortician has been something that I've been wanting to do since I was very, very young. Maybe six or seven years old, the first thing that I said that I wanted to do was a mortician. I was actually watching a horror movie and there was a mortician on there and I said to my dad, what is that? Explain to me what it was and I said I want to do that. As I grew up it still stuck with me. There were other things that came in that I wanted to do like I thought about dentistry, I thought about being a vet, but those things weren't truly what I wanted to do in my life. I've just always loved the idea of being a mortician. If you don't know what a mortician is because I know I'm gonna get asked, basically in a nutshell it is somebody who prepares dead bodies for funerals. There's so much more to the job than that. It's a lot about helping people and that's basically why that I really want to be a mortician. I love helping people. Some people are like, ew, why do you want to be a mortician? You just want to deal with dead bodies all day. I hate when people just are so like so narrow-minded and judgmental and just think of the first broad thing they see. They don't think deeper into it in which I do. I love helping people. Helping people is something that I try to do on a day-to-day -day basis, not only on YouTube, but in my everyday life. Um, in high school, I just, I love helping people. And in that situation, you need to be dealing with families who are in a very vulnerable, sad situation. And to try to make them, I wouldn't say happy, but as at ease as possible as you can, that's what I truly want to do. In a situation like that, you want to make the best it possibly can be for the family. If somebody's two-year-old daughter just passed away, it's going to be an extremely difficult time for them, same as somebody's uncle passed away or grandpa. It's an extremely difficult time for the person and to make, either, it takes a special type of person to make them at ease and try to help them and try to be there for them. So it's a lot about coping with the family. It's not just about dead bodies, making arrangements for the funeral. And then there's the portion with the human remains that if they were in a horrible car accident, you need to put them back together. And I feel that that's something that I can do. I love doing makeup. I love art. I'm very crafty and artsy. I can take a project and make it good. Stuff like that doesn't gross me out. Humans and helping people is not something that grosses me out or should gross somebody out, but I guess it does. For other people, definitely not for me. I don't think that way. So by them saying, you know, here's a picture of what my uncle looked like every day. Can you make him look like this? And of course I can, and I can do my absolute 100 best. I want them to look at their uncle, dad, husband, niece, whoever it is, and say, that is how my niece always looked, or that's how she always looked, or he always looked. Thank you so much for having my last visit with my loved one to be that of a positive one and not, okay, he never looked like this. I've been with this guy for 50 years and on his last day that I'm gonna see him, on my most vulnerable day, he doesn't even look like that. That's what I don't want and that's what I try to prevent because I've heard a lot of stories of how people had their uncles pass away and then they go to the funeral and they say, that's not what my uncle looked like at all. I don't want that and I want to try to help that and fix that and make you say, you know, my uncle looked so at peace and he looked exactly like himself. One story in particular made me truly want to be a mortician and here it is. My mom's parents, so my grandparents on my mom's side, I never met them and my mom was only, I think she was two or three when they died so she barely never knew them as well. And my mom's parents had um, 13 brothers and sisters so I have a huge family of aunts and uncles and they all lost their mom and dad in a car accident, which is very tragic. Um, I think about it all the time. How maybe it would have been different for my mom to have parents growing up. This may be a little bit graphic. I'm gonna try to make it as least graphic as possible. Um, when my grandparents were in the car crash, my grandma, so my mom's mom, she died basically by the windshield, um, cutting her head off right here. So she basically didn't have half of her forehead. The mortician back in the day, because they weren't really well equipped back then, what they did was they basically they couldn't create a forehead, they couldn't really do anything, so they basically just threw a wig on her. Her head's here and then a wig. My uncle at the time, I think he was only 17, he went. He walked into the funeral or the church and he looked at his dad and then he looked at his mom and said, that's not my mom. And I remember this story, all my aunties and uncles and my mom always tells me the story of my uncle's like 
freaking out and saying, this is not my mom. Why are you doing this to me and my family? Why are you doing this on her last day in this world? Why are you making her look not at all what she's like? And he stormed out of the funeral and he didn't continue with the funeral, which is truly upsetting to me because the last time with your loved one and it's the most horrible situation. That story has just always stuck with me and I want to prevent that as much as possible. I don't want people to be sad or feel any type of negative, negative emotions once the last time they're gonna be seeing their loved one. Being a mortician is something that I've always wanted to do and I, lo I know a lot of you are like, well, I thought you wanted to be a teacher and dentist is what I always get told. Here's the story with that as quick as possible, I'm gonna make this. In high school, I had wonderful, extravagant grades. I've always been a great student. I'm not bragging, this is just part of the story. So I got a few scholarships to university. So basically, the majority of my studies being paid for because I was such a tremendous student and had great grades that I got scholarships. And to be a mortician, in my city, I mean other places, states, countries, cities will be different, but in where I live and basically anywhere around me, in any of the provinces around me, you don't go to mortician school at a university. It's not offered at universities. It's basically a separate school or it's in a college. So me working so hard in high school and getting scholarships to university, that was my crossroads in life. Do I continue to do what I love and what I really want to do in life, which is a mortician? Or do I take these scholarships and try university because you never know what's gonna be there. I may find something that I love even more than a mortician. So uh, what I did is I went to university and said, you know what, I'm gonna try it, I'm gonna see if I like it, and then I can always go back to being a mortician or trying out mortician because I'd never took in any mortician courses. So I did that, um, my first year of university, I thought, okay, well, what do I wanna do, right? There's nothing I wanna do here. I took psychology my first year, um, well, my major was psychology. I took a lot of courses, but my major was psychology. And I found out in my city where I live, there's basically no jobs you can do while being in psychology. And at the time I was working at Value Village and um, a supervisor of mine who worked there with me, she had, she graduated university with um, a psychology degree and she was working at Value Village. There's nothing wrong with working at Value Village. I absolutely love Value Village, but I wouldn't want to go through all those years of university and then just be able to work at Value Village because she said there was no other jobs for her. So then my second year I went into education or teaching. I wanted to become a teacher because I said there's nothing else I want to do here. Uh, teaching actually does interest me so let's go into it. Turned out it didn't and there was absolutely no jobs again. Um, actually three of my cousins and my auntie and my cousin's girlfriend are all teachers. Well they graduated from school and there's absolutely no jobs for them. They're working construction and waitresses because there's nothing for them. It's going to be different in all places. I'm just saying for me personally and in my city. So then I'm like okay hey, what am I going to do now right? So then the third year which is everyone always asks me about I went to the student counselor and I said, what can I do? You know, what's wrong with me? I have great grades, but I don't know what to do. And she's like, what's it? What interests you? And I told her the mortician and there's absolutely nothing to do with that in university. And she said, well, your grades are good enough to be in dentistry, which is one of the top um, choices in university. So she said, you know, your grades are good enough. You can get accepted really quickly so you can do dentistry if you like. It's very hard to get into. And I said, okay, let's do it. It was a lot of work. I only was in it for what, a school year. And I decided, you know what? I need to follow my dreams and I need to do something what I love because what the next year I'm gonna say, oh, let's be in nursing and the next year, oh, let's be in this and that's, you know. Obviously, if I was changing every single year, it wasn't what I wanted to do. So I followed my dreams and that's something that I really need to stress is if you're wanting to do something, look into it, check it out and go for it. It's just in my heart. It's always been in there since I was so, so young. So I thought, you know what? I'm just gonna do it. And I'm actually in mortician school right now. I could not be happier. There's no thoughts at all running in my mind of switching. This is where I want to be and this is where I am. The best decision I made in my life was to follow my dreams and do what I love. That's basically why I want to be a mortician. Um, I've always wanted to and I love helping people. I'm kind of a weird person, people always say to me, or I'm, I'm, I'm morbid, people always say. I know how to deal with people. I know how to help people and deal with their emotions. I actually wanted to share with you guys my grade 8 grad book. So here's my page. Um, yes, there's me. There's the little baby me and there's me in grade eight. 
And right here is a list of my class, and it is our future plans. Here's me, Samantha, mortician slash accountant. I don't know where I got accountant from. I don't even remember but wanting to be an accountant, but it, the first one here is mortician. So even back in grade eight, when I was 14 years old, I still wanted to be a mortician. So I thought that was a little bit interesting for you guys because I just love it. It's just something that I'm interested in, and I think I just spent 10 minutes telling you guys the story of why I want to be a mortician. So now you guys know you don't have to ask anymore. No, I'm not going to be switching to something else another time This is always what I wanted to do. So follow your dreams and do what you love. So thank you for watching this I hope you have a great day. Thank you so much, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye guys